what you're looking at is a radial engine, and it's considered by many to be the perfect engine. It conquered the skies during wartime, massive mechanical giants that were the backbone of aviation before the jet era. But how exactly did these complex machines work? And why did they disappear? Unlike the inline or V-type engines we see in many vehicles, aircraft radial engines are known for having their cylinders arranged in a circle around a central crankshaft. This configuration offered a significant advantage for early aviation. Its compact design and short frontal length made it ideal for mounting directly behind propeller, reducing aerodynamic drag and maximizing efficiency. However, that very benefit would also become a key disadvantage, as I'll explain later. The heart of its operation lies in an ingenious connecting rod system. Only one of the rods, called the master rod, connects directly to the crankshaft. The rods from the remaining cylinders, known as articulating rods, attach to the master rod, allowing all pistons to contribute to the rotation of the single shaft. Like most piston engines, radial engines operate on the four-stroke cycle, intake, compression, combustion, and exhaust. What makes them unique is their firing order. To ensure smooth and balanced operation, radial engines always have an odd number of cylinders per row, e.g. 5, 7, or 9. This allows the firing to skip one cylinder each time, ensuring the explosions are evenly spaced around the crankshaft over two complete rotations. The process begins as the pistons move downward, drawing the air-fuel mixture into the cylinders through intake valves operated by push rods and rocker arms. Then, the pistons rise, compressing that mixture. A spar from the spark plug ignites it, producing an explosion that forcefully pushes the piston down, the power stroke. Finally, the piston rises again, expelling the burnt gases through the exhaust valves. A distinctive feature of these old engines is their air cooling system. Given their frontal exposure to the airflow, the radial design was perfectly suited for this simple and lightweight solution, eliminating the need for radiators and complex liquid cooling systems that would add weight. Each cylinder was covered with metal fins to increase the surface area for heat dissipation, and air baffles were carefully designed to direct airflow evenly over all the cylinders. However, lubrication came with its own set of challenges. These engines typically use a dry sump system, where oil wasn't stored at the bottom of the engine, but in an external tank. We actually have a video explaining the dry sump system in detail. Link in the description. This setup was crucial for aerobatics, preventing the oil from shifting due to gravity. But when the engine was turned off, oil could seep through the piston rings and accumulate in the lower cylinders. If this wasn't drained or if the propeller wasn't turned manually before startup, the oil buildup could cause a dangerous hydraulic lock, potentially causing serious damage to the engine. Radial engines dominated the skies for decades because of their excellent power-to-weight ratio for their time, their compactness, and their remarkable reliability and service, since the failure of one cylinder did not always mean total loss of power. 